Chapter 43. Down the Hatch. Jack and his grandfather watched from the roof at Twilight Towers as the elderly escapees disappeared over the perimeter wall. Good luck, men, muttered the old man, giving them one last salute before they vanished from view. They were being chased by a gang of nurses who had rushed out of the building in pursuit, carrying torches and huge nets. Meanwhile, Jack and his grandfather were four floors up. The rope of knickers had ripped. The drain pipe had been yanked off the wall. If they tried to jump, they would surely break every bone in their bodies. Jack could only see one way out. Down the hatch, sir. Oh, is it cocktail hour? Asked Grandpa, innocently. I'll have a gin and tonic, please. No, I mean, we have to go down the hatch. It's the only way out. Oh, yes, of course. Good thinking, squadron leader. I must recommend you to the Air Chief Marshal for a medal. The boy thought he would burst with pride. Thank you, sir. But there's no time to lose. Let's go. Jack took his grandfather's hand to guide him across the slope and roof. On one slip, and they would plummet to their deaths. But just as they reached the hatch, they spotted the end of Maitland's baton, snaking out of it. The end fizzed with electricity. Jack suddenly realised it was a in fact, a cattle prod, used by farmers to give cows an electric shock to move them in the right direction. But in the maintenance hands, it must be some kind of instrument of torture. The little lady crawled out of the hatch and rose to her feet. As she stood on the roof, she held the cattle prod aloft, a cape billowing in the wind. One by one, Nurse Rose and Blossom forced their bulky bodies through the hatch too and joined her. <coughs> With a sinister smile on her face, the wicked lady edged forward, a nurse on either side. I knew you two were up to no good in the garden yesterday. There's been a mass escape tonight, and you are the ringleaders. Don't punish him, please. I beg you, pleaded Jack. The escape was all my idea. Actually, Commandant, it's me you should be sending to the punishment block. This young chap... Had absolutely nothing to do with the plan at all. Silence! She shouted. Both of you! And there was silence. Maitland pressed the button on her cattle prod and a huge bolt of electricity shot out of the other end. What are you going to do with that, Commandant? asked Grandpa. I've had this cattle prod specially modified <coughs> to have 10 million volts passing <coughs> through it. Enough to knock a grown man out cold with just one press of this button. Grandpa moved his grandson behind him protectively. That's barbaric, Commandant, he exclaimed. The use of torture is forbidden on prisoners of a war. A manic smile spread over Miss Swine's face. Just you watch me. With that, she poked Nurse Rose with the cattle prod and pressed the button. A white and blue ball leapt off it. For a moment, the nurse's entire body was lit up by electricity. Matron took her finger off the button and the nurse fell to the floor, unconscious. As Miss Swine chuckled to herself, Jack and his grandfather looked on in stunned silence. How could she do that to one of her own henchwomen? Even Nurse Blossom appeared nervous and shifted uncomfortably on her feet. Sorry, I just need to see that one more time, ventured Grandpa. The old man was betting on the matron falling for his ruse, ruse and taking out the other nurse as well. I'm not falling for that old man, announced Matron. Nurse Blossom. Get them, ordered Miss Swine. The burly nurse stepped over her unconscious colleague and surged forward. With her thick arms outstretched, she made a lunge at them. The bell tower, cried Grandpa. Twilight Tower's bells were ringing still to, the sound, to sound the alarm. As they got closer, the noise became deafening. The bell was suspended in a little turret. Beneath it was a long, thick rope. Grab hold of the rope, shouted the old man. The problem was the rope was moving up and down rapidly as someone below tugged on it to ring the bell. Jack looked over his shoulder to see Nurse Blossom advancing on him. Miss Swine was close behind, brandishing a cattle prod. There was no choice. Jack took a leap and seized the rope with both hands. Immediately he felt as if his palms were on fire as he slid down the shaft at great speed. Ah! Oh! cried the boy. Jack looked down and saw it was the nurse, Nurse Daisy below him, swinging on the rope. Just as she looked up, Jack crashed 
right on top of her. Bash! The nurse broke his fall and was knocked out cold in the process. Result, thought the boy. But as Nurse Daisy splayed on the floor, her wig came off, revealing a shaved head underneath. On close inspection, the nurse had stubble all over her face too. She was a man. Chapter 44. All sorts. Standing at the bottom of the bell tower, Jack heard a noise above his head. Looking up, he saw Grandpa coming down the rope at quite a speed. The boy quickly stepped aside out of the old man's way. Look, Wing Commander, she's a man, said the boy as Grandpa landed. Now it made sense why the nurses at Twilight Tower were so big and burly. Maybe they all are. Grandpa peered down at the man. Oh, well, it takes all sorts, I suppose. I trained with an excellent pilot named Charles. Charles, the weekends, he would dress up and tell us all to call him Clarissa. Made an extremely pretty woman. I had one or two marriage proposals. Sadly, there wasn't time to properly process this fascinating snippet of information. Right now, they had to find some way out of Twilight Towers. Grandpa knew the inside of the building much better than Jack. Where to next, Wing Commander? The boy asked. I am thinking, squadron leader. I am thinking, said the old man. But before Grandpa had a chance to do so, the boy cried, Look out! Jack yanked his grandfather out the way. As Nurse Blossom hurtled down with her, hurtled down with her, or perhaps rather his very airy legs wrapped round the rope. Quick, this way, said Grandpa as the pair hurried off. Just as Nurse Daisy was coming to, Nurse Blossom landed on top of her, knocking her out cold again. Bash! In the collision, Nurse Blossom's wig came off too. She was also a man. All the nurses at Twilight Towers must be, thought Jack. Nothing at this old folk's home was what it seemed. As the skin-headed, heavy as the skin-headed Evie scrambled to his feet, Jack and his grandpa, grandfather reached the door. It was open and they quickly slammed it shut behind them. Slam! As Nurse Blo Blossom, or whatever his real name was, pounded on the door with his fists that were as heavy as bricks, Jack and Grandpa forced their backs up against it. The nurse was as strong as a bull and they couldn't hold him back for much longer. The sideboard, squadron leader, ordered Grandpa. The old man kept his back against the door and his grandson pushed the heavy wooden piece of furniture into place in front of it, trapping Nurse Blossom and Nurse Dursey in the bell tower. The door began to slam against the sideboard. Slam, slam, slam. And the pair dashed down the long corridor towards the front door. Just then, the sound of footsteps echoed down the stairs. It was a platoon of more nurses, no doubt on their way to search for the escapees. They're everywhere, whispered Jack. As he and his grandpa hid on the other side of, grandfa of a grandfather clock, while the nurses passed. We'll never be able to sneak out here now, sir, said the boy. Well, in that case, I've learned this at training camp, announced the old man. Our only hope of escape is to disguise ourselves as them. Jack wasn't sure. He had quite understood what his grandpa had just said. You mean? Yes, squadron leader. We must put on their uniforms. <laughs>